This video can essentially be divided into two parts. Firstly, it suggests approaches that will help you to prepare for Paper 1, Section 1 of the HSC English exam, short responses. Secondly, it outlines strategies to assist you during the exam. The first thing you need to do in order to be successful in Paper 1 is to learn the discovery rubric. Know it back to front. The questions in Paper 1 will be devised from this rubric, so it makes sense for you to know it. And when you're answering questions in Paper 1, you need to make sure that you're linking your responses back to the concept of discovery. As examples, I've created questions under the headings of triggers, experiences and consequences. I'd recommend that you try and create your own questions as it's an excellent way to apply your knowledge and understanding of the rubric. To be able to create your own short response questions and to be able to successfully answer exam questions, you need to understand what each question is asking you to do. Each question will have a verb directive and the definitions of the verb directive that I've provided have been taken from the BOSTES website. I'd recommend that you check out this website as there is lots of information that will help you with your HSC, past exams, markers feedback, etc. I recommend that you dedicate 10 to 15 minutes at the start of every free period to reading and analysing a text. Most of you will spend your free periods in the school library, which contains lots of different text types. The five forms that you are most likely to have to analyse in your HSC are visual text, multimedia, fiction, non-fiction and poetry. Try and choose a different text type every time you're in the library. I've included some suggestions, however, there are lots more, so keep your eyes out for them. Now, I've suggested that you create your own questions, however, I've also supplied some sample questions on visual text, written text, and poetry. You'll notice that these questions often start with what, how, or why. What questions are asking you about the ideas? How questions are asking you about the form and language? And why questions are asking you about context, audience, and purpose? Obviously, you need to know this if you're going to do well in the exam. Now, you don't need to be in a library in order to analyse a text. We are surrounded by text in our everyday lives, on the internet, television, radio, newspaper, billboards, etc. These texts all have a specific purpose and are trying to influence us. Be aware of all these texts and deconstruct them. At the moment, there are lots of advertisements for Channel 10's franchise, The Bachelorette. I'll give you a quick demonstration of how I would deconstruct this multimedia text. The composer's purpose is to convince viewers to watch The Bachelorette. The target audience is Australians, and I suspect there would be a specific target demographic, age, gender, etc. The context is Western for both the composer and the viewer. The text represents the program as a journey of discovery and the characters will use the word journey until they're blue in the face. Now, the techniques that the composer has used. I think you need to aim to have identified six techniques in a 30 second view of a visual text, or by the time it takes you to read a written text. However, where you're going to score marks in your short responses and essays is in your analysis of these techniques. You need to be judicious in your selection of these techniques which means you need to choose to analyse the techniques that allow you to answer the question. Avoid merely listing techniques like a shopping list. This is where a technique and effect table is excellent. I'd recommend starting with these in your first term of Year 12. And when you've made tables for all the different types of text, you can then move on to answering actual questions and practice writing responses under time pressure. The mark that each question is worth should decide the amount that you write. I'll talk more about this later. It's vital that you are able to recognise the techniques that are specific to each text type. I'm providing examples of different techniques in this video, however, I want to stress that this isn't an exhaustive list, and please feel free to comment below if you think I've missed an important one, because other students will read your post and benefit from it. 
For any text that have a visual image, you should be able to recognize the use of angles, appropriation audience, background, color, composition, empty space, fragmentation, gaze, framing, modality, perspective, shot, and the rule of thirds. Literary techniques could be used in any text with writing. You need to be able to identify and analyse alliteration, assonance, characterisation, colloquialism, conceit, enjambment, foreshadowing, hyperbole, imagery, jargon, metaphor, metre, metonymy, motif, narrative voice, onomatopoeia, oxymoron, paradox, personification, repetition, simile, synodoxy, tautology, and theme. It's also important to have an understanding of grammar. Analyzing why a composer is breaking grammar rules or using grammar to shape meaning will result in marks in your short responses and essays. You need to be able to identify and analyze adjectives, adverbs, lexical choices, modality, moods of verbs, pronouns, subordinate clauses, syntax, and verbs. Finally, to the exam. Use your 10 minutes of reading time productively. Read all the relevant questions, so everything in section 1 and section 2, and the questions for your prescribed text in section 3. There is generally a central theme to the paper, and checking out all the questions in the reading time can alert you to this theme. Also, your brain is an amazing machine that will be busy in the background figuring out how to answer the questions in section 2 and 3 whilst you're answering section 1. And this is the reason that I'd recommend doing section 1 first. The next thing to do is to read and view all the text in section 1. As you're doing this, identify the context, audience and purpose of each text. And identify the techniques used to shape meanings in each text. So how much should you write per question? A common mistake that students make is that they write too much for the one and two mark questions. They may get full marks for these questions, but they are wasting precious time that could be spent on questions worth more marks. I'd recommend that you aim to spend about 2.5 minutes per mark on each question. So for a three mark question, you'll spend about seven and a half minutes answering it. Now, how much should you aim to write in this allocated time? For a one mark question, I believe that you can get full marks with just two sentences. You probably have a paragraph scaffold that you use, a settle or sexy paragraphs, etc. I teach petal paragraphs, and I recommend to my students that they aim to write one petal per mark, which means one technique per mark. But please feel free to substitute your own scaffold into this tip. I believe it's worth paying special attention to the five to six mark question, the mini essay. This question will generally provide insight into the expectations that the HSC exam committee has for the various texts. Again, do section one first. You'll need to practice writing 15 minute mini essays and I believe you should be aiming for between 300 and 400 words. And that's it, you've made it. To finish, I'd like to recommend some tips for section one you need to make sure you answer the question using complete sentences and paragraphs. You need to write clearly and use a sophisticated vocabulary. So start your own discovery glossary and always be on the hunt for evocative words, especially verbs. When you get to the exam, spend 2.5 minutes per mark answering each question. To get good at doing this, practice writing responses under time pressure and make sure you analyse a variety of text types. So now, as the orchestra music begins to play, the final thing for me to do is to wish Year 12 students all the best with their studies and exams. Thank you so much for watching.